Good morning. God bless you. And we welcome you to our uh, Wednesday morning devotional. And uh, we're just going to worship the Lord and praise Him uh, as uh, you guys gather in and come on on online. This is Pastor Sam from uh, Circle Crest Church. And I usually do morning devotions every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, with several interruptions during the week due to other responsibilities, but I always get back to it. So I have been away for a while, uh, but I'm back, and uh, and we hope that this will be a blessing to you. We're starting a new venture, and that is we completed The Good and Beautiful Life, the second book in the series, the trilogy, The Good and Beautiful God, The Good and Beautiful Life. And uh, next week, we'll go full in on the good and beautiful community. Today, we'll give you a little introduction on it. And uh, we just look forward to uh, praising the Lord together. Amen? And learning how to uh, be a part and do life together so that we can represent Christ. Amen? So as uh, you gather in and connect with us, we'll... Uh, We'll uh, just worship the Lord. Amen. Praise God. You make me lie down in green pastures. You make me want for nothing. You fill my hunger with honey from your sweet, sweet. Let me worship before you So I will love and adore you You are my shepherd You are my Jesus You are my King You make me lie down in the patches You make me walk Thank you. 
from your sweet, sweet one. You let me worship before you, so I will love and adore you. You are my shepherd, you're my Jesus, you are my Praise the Lord. God bless you all. And welcome this morning. I see a few of you are on. and I'm glad that you're on. I mean, I would do this program whether anybody were on or not, but it's so much better. And the fellowship is felt. So thank you for coming on. Good morning to all of you. May you have a blessed day. And I pray God's blessing and strength be upon you as you... Uh, as you join us, amen, you join us in our morning devotion, praise God, so let's say good morning to some of you, I see, I see that uh, Olga's there, still celebrating your birthday, Olga, God bless you, I saw you had a wonderful time, and you even had uh, singers harmonizing for you, God bless you, and may he add many more years to your life, amen, let's see if I can, uh, if I can get this uh, going here, um, somebody tell me if you if you hear me, and uh, I just want to make sure because uh, I always try something different every week. <laughs> well, sometimes every day. Anyway, let let let's see if we can get on uh, a third device so that uh, I can check and see who is getting on. All right. Okay, this is not it. All right. Good morning. Oh, okay. Ronnie's on. Thank you, Ronnie. God bless you. God bless you for coming on. Let me just lower this. Okay, here we go. And uh, I'll put this here on a very low volume so it doesn't interfere. And I see more people on this. Yes, you're on. Edie tells me that we're on. Okay, praise God. Thank you, Edie. Um, let's see. That's Olga I mentioned. God bless you, Gloria. Beautiful day. That's right. It turned out to be a beautiful morning. Uh, Marcos Babon, all the way from Kansas. Sylvia Gonzalez, all the way from Florida. God bless you, Sylvia. And uh, we pray for Bobby as well. And uh, Evelyn Laboy is on this morning. God bless you. And I already mentioned Edie, La Prima. God bless you. For, uh, I hope uh, you're doing well. Esther's not here. Uh, she she is taking care of a uh, you know a little baby for a mom who gave birth not too long ago and has three boys. Can you imagine that? Yeah, three boys. I look this way because I I'm, I'm looking at different uh, devices just to see who's on. All right, and I see my sister Liz Torres and her sister Karen. God bless you. Uh, you're winding down the year, Liz. Right? Hey, I'm sorry about showing my hand there to the camera, but I had something blocking there, and I wanted to clean it, all right, uh, and Louis, Louis Hernandez, God bless you, Louis, I, I, I'm, it was good to see you Sunday, man, have you slimmed down, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of you, you've done well, God bless you and Kathy, uh, Lizanne Espina from Love Gospel Assembly, God bless you, dear, and God bless your ministry there at the church, uh, saying hello to her, all the way from Love Gospel, uh, one of our associate pastors and ministers, Myrna Torres, good morning to you. Say good morning to Eddie. Nelson, I missed you yesterday. Good to see you on today. Inez Bernard, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed the worship. It's not the same without my wife on the piano, but we try our best. Inez Bernard, God bless you as well. And Mama Jean is on. Wow. Ronnie, God bless you. Hallelujah. Yeah, you could hear me loud and clear. That's great. Hallelujah. Carol Elias. Ah, Carol Elias. Ah, and um, how is your sister doing? I haven't gotten a report. Uh, we can continue praying for Evelyn. Uh, 
and make sure that you give her all love. Amen. Yeah, you had a wonderful birthday, Olga. That's good. That's good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, let's see who's on on this side. Uh, Papa Joe is on too. Praise God. Well, if Olga's on, Papa Joe would probably be right behind her. Amen. And uh, let's see. Okay, I think we've mentioned everyone who uh, has been on so far this morning. And we thank you for, for joining us. And uh, uh, we thank God for the opportunity. Uh, amen. Oh, Monin is watching us. I didn't see her over there, but I see her here. Yeah, that's why you have to have two or three. Uh, Monin is on. God bless you, Monin. And if Monin is on, hi, Victor. God bless you. Miss you. Love you. And I thank God for all of you. Amen. Praise God. All right. So uh, just a few things that we want to always remind you of. Uh, I very rarely do it, and, and yet we do need it. We do need your support and your prayers. Um, and, uh, so if you, if you're interested in having your children come to, um, our children's church, our minister, uh, Maribel is usually on. I don't see her on this morning, but, uh, even if you don't feel comfortable sending your kids so far, all of our kids are doing well. We haven't had anyone sick. There's one child that's sick, but didn't, has not been out to church. So they got it at home or wherever they were at. And we'll be praying for baby. Uh, it's, uh, well, he's a toddler now. That's my godson, Lucas. Amen. And uh, that's, not, that's not Luca. That's Lucas. That, uh, that's Chaplain Ray's grandson. Chaplain Ray's grandson. Amen. And uh, so, uh, but uh, the children in, uh, did a fantastic Easter skits they did some funny skits along with the youth i love the the collaboration between the the uh, operation grace and the children that, that's beautiful we're we're one we're really one one community and and uh, we're we're a family church and so um even if you're not family and you you you're missing members of your family lots of folks in our church are are without family and so we are their family amen and uh Today, unfortunately, we, we have to announce that a former member of our church, a dear brother to me, Hector Rosario, his brother Richard passed away yesterday after a long battle with cancer. And uh, so we'll be praying for him and praying for the Rosario family. That will be uh, Bishop Rosario's younger brother, Richard. Uh, the funeral will be up in Waterbury, Connecticut. It's even far from me, and I live in Connecticut, but... Uh, uh, we extend our condolences to the entire Rosario family and all of the extended family. Amen. Uh, Carol reports to us that Evelyn starts radiation soon. Uh, but praise God, no need for chemo. Well, God is faithful. Hallelujah. See, that's why we have to constantly keep uh, praying because this, these are long battles and we're, we're trusting God for them. Amen. Yes, you can greet one another. This is very important. Very important. Well, with that out of the way, um, let's uh, let's uh, just remind you that you can write to us. Um, let's see. Let's let's get this. Uh, yeah, let's get this out of the way. Uh, where am I? Yeah, here I am. There we go. That's good. There we go. Our mailing address is D Libert. 3300 Connor Street, P.O. Box 547, and um, Bronx, New York, 10475. And uh, the easiest way to donate is through our website. And, um, and you can do that by going to our website. And uh, let's see, let's get this out of the way and let's get into, yeah, here we go, tithes and offerings. You can go to Circle of Christ Church. That's all without any spaces. Uh, we did it wrong there, but it's no spaces. It's Circle of Christ Church, all uh, four words together with no space in between, dot com. And then you do a right slash um, and uh, type in donate, and that will bring you right into our giving portal. And you just uh, uh, just uh, type in what it's for, if it's a donation, if it's um, for faith ministry, 
if it's for the food pantry, if it's for Bibles, if it's for the children's ministry, if it's a tithe, if it's a general offering, whatever whatever you designate it for, that's the way it will be used. And so we, we appreciate all of your support. You know that I very rarely come on here asking for support because uh, I completely forget most of the time. I'm just here to give and give and give. And uh, But every so often, we need to remind you that it is more blessed to give than to receive. The church uh, always appreciates your support, okay? Good morning to Paula. She's on. And if Paula's on, then we believe that Frank is on. Praise the Lord. Okay, so here I am back here. And um, we, uh, we are um, expecting uh, a tremendous uh, blessing this week, as always. Uh, Friday, uh, our Operation Grace gathers. That's our teens ministry. And they're led by uh, several ministers. Uh, one of our youth ministers, Andres Rodriguez and, uh, and Amy uh, Morales and... Uh, very often our youth pastor is there, uh, uh, Pastor Gary, and I see that he's watching. Look at that perfect timing. Gary just mentioned your name. Amen. Just announcing uh, Operation Grace on Friday. And uh, this Saturday, very, very important, this Saturday, um, we will be having the Men's Fellowship. The Men's Fellowship is this Saturday. And uh, somebody tell me what time it is because uh, I can't. I can't look it up because I, I'll ruin ev everything that I set up here so far. So I, I always have somebody who knows that puts it on. The Men's Fellowship is this Saturday. Uh, it's posted so you can you could see it on uh, our website and also on, um, on Facebook. On Facebook, that's the easiest place to find it. If not, then um, you can contact um, Pastor J. Ramos and he'll let you know. Uh, okay, so Gary rescued me. Thank you. 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Um, this and it's in person. Usually they gather uh, on Zoom, but this will be our first in person for the men's fellowship. So all the fellows out there, uh, single, married, whatever, uh, you you show up. This men's fellowship is at 11 a.m. as Gary so kindly updated us, and um, and so we uh, we expect the men to show up. Amen. Okay, so praise the Lord, and uh, so and then Sunday we have our two services, our Spanish service um, at nine o'clock, and then our English service at eleven. Uh, service start, actually starts at ten after eleven. We give enough time for the children to come in, for the Spanish service to leave, and for the English congregation to come in. That's uh, that's what we have to do every Sunday. Uh, limited space and um, just beautiful ministries that we have. And um, so um, what I was uh, going to say, and this is uh, special, is that uh, in the Spanish service at 9 o'clock, we'll be having for the first time in about a year, you know, first time in about a year, right around this time last year, our Pastor Raul uh, was in pain and... Uh, severe headaches and uh, his eyes were blurry and uh, we sent him to the hospital because he was never sick. I've known him for years and years and years and he's never been sick. I worked with him so I used to see him every day uh, and um, never got sick. My, uh, healthy, healthy uh, brother. And to see him like that I said go, go to the doctor right now. Doctor said uh, he had to go. They thought it was something with the eyes, so he went to the ophthalmologist. They sent him to the hospital, and there in the hospital, he had, uh, I guess, a CAT scan and an MRI done, and they discovered three tumors in his brain. That was the beginning of a, a powerful journey that the Lord brought all of us through. Uh, we fasted, we prayed, we interceded, and we continued to intercede. And we believed God for his healing, and the Lord was gracious. There was a battle in the beginning. There was a lot of suffering on his part and his family, but the Lord was so good. And so this Sunday, uh, Pastor Raul, and I, I hope uh, Elder Diane as well, Pastor Raul and Elder Diane, 
will be in our Spanish service. So if, um, if you want to see him this Sunday, you have to register for our Spanish service. And um, the following Sunday, we're only allowing him to stay in one service per Sunday. And uh, th those are my instructions. He called me and said, what do you want? How do you want to, to do this, Pastor? And I told him, this is what I want. And I want to protect you. And, uh, and so uh, no, no hugging. No, no you know, um, keep your mask on all the time. And uh, one service, one service. And uh, I want you to do the Spanish service first because he is the pastor of our Spanish congregation. And, uh, and so uh, I've been filling in for him for the last uh, almost, almost two years. Well, uh, a year and a half anyway. And, uh, but uh, those, uh, those lesions and those tumors disappeared. They're nowhere to be found. God took care of them. Uh, the doctor that God gave us the oncologist was a gift from God. The hospital was a gift from God. And, um, and the doors that were opened miraculously. And so we're, we're happy to testify that he's doing well and that he will be with us on Sunday in the Spanish service. Amen. So uh, I think that that does it for our, uh, our, um, our announcements. We, we are reminding that... Uh, those who will be receiving credentials. We have to limit it initially. I wanted to have a big to-do with husbands and wives and everything, but uh, didn't want to do it in church. So when, when uh, we decided to go to a hotel and rent a room, we found out that everything has gone up. Every, the prices are incredible. So uh, yesterday we secured the place, and um, we could only have the actual candidates um, uh, who are going to be receiving credentials. Um, I'll be getting in touch with all, all of those candidates via email, so be aware that I'm going to be reaching out to different sections, different groups uh, who are receiving different credentials uh, with some of my expectations, and then we'll, we'll tell you a little bit more. We had hoped, and we had actually uh, confirmed uh, uh, Reverend Dr. Alfonso Wyatt to minister to us. Unfortunately, there's been a uh, a death uh, in the church family, and they're having they're having the memorial on that day, and they have assigned him the responsibility of leading the uh, the memorial service. And so, um, having been part of so many of those, I, I practically have become the funeral pastor of the Bronx, because <laughs> um, I've done it for other churches and for people all over the place. And, uh, and I, uh, I'm looking to, to uh, retire from that <laughs> if someone will take up the responsibility. But at any rate, because I understand what that means, uh, we released him from that responsibility. And uh, we, we will be inviting another resource. I'm just waiting for the confirmation. But it will be, uh, well, it will be a former student of mine many, many years ago who today is a, a tremendous pastor and preacher. Uh, and I know that they will have a word from the Lord for our leadership. And then uh, after the luncheon on April 30th, that's April 30th, that's still going on from 10 to 3, uh, uh, from 10 o'clock in the morning till 3 o'clock in the afternoon, we'll be having a continental breakfast and then a luncheon. Then after the luncheon, I will be addressing uh, all of the leaders, and we will be doing a um, a commitment, uh, a covenant, a covenant uh, commitment service, where we um, we stand and declare that we will commit ourselves to the service of the gospel and to the service of our church family, Circle of Christ Church. So that's on that's on the program, uh, and. Uh, but then on May 22nd, May 22nd is a very special day, and uh, we're, we're hopefully going to expand and add some seats and see if we can sit tightly together and make sure that nobody who's sick comes. But we want to create room and space for the family of those who are going to be installed. There's a few who are going to be licensed ministers, others who are going to be installed as youth ministers, and others who will be installed as teaching elders, missionaries, and, uh, and deacons. 
And so um, the, those are those are uh, are uh, those are our uh, members who will be installed. Um, praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, so um, let's just get ready for for the lesson. Okay, I, I'm sorry to announce uh, that I will not be doing the devotional tomorrow morning. Uh, I had committed myself and I forgot, and then I saw it on. And uh, there's a, a member of the church who will need transportation, a long distance transportation for a medical, a very important medical appointment. And um, so uh, I won't, won't be able to uh, meet tomorrow here, um, but uh, we'll, we'll get to the good and beautiful community and fly on next Tuesday. So uh, please note that. And so you, you, you won't get a notification that I'll be on live because I won't be. I, I will be on the road uh, traveling long distance, okay? All right, so um, praise the Lord for the opportunity. Let's, let's just praise, praise God. And let's, let's, before we do the teaching, let's pray. Let's seek God's face, amen? Father in heaven, we worship you. We glorify your name. You are worthy to be praised, hallelujah. Lord, we, we present to you, we present to you the Rosario family, O oh God, who yesterday, O oh Lord, said farewell to their brother Richard. We pray, O oh God, for his, his family, his immediate family, wife and children, and brothers and sisters, and those who, who loved him, his nephews and nieces, and we just pray, O oh God, that the consolation of the Holy Spirit will be upon them in a very, very special way. And that, O oh Lord, O oh God, that every family member would receive a grace, that your name might be glorified, and that someone will draw closer to you, even give their hearts to you, O oh God, by way and by virtue of the services that will be held in honor of our brother Richard Rosario. And so, oh God, we thank you for that. And Lord, we, we pray for Evelyn, oh God. We thank you for the good news that chemo was not necessary. And so we pray, oh God, that as she begins the radiation treatment, that she will experience the same experience that uh, our brother uh, uh, and Pastor Raul and our sister Evelyn uh, and, and many others who have experienced the healing power of your grace even in battling cancer. And so, Lord, we pray, O oh God, that Evelyn will be strengthened and helped through this journey, O oh God. Bless her loved ones and her family, O oh God. And now, Lord, we return to you. We ask you, God, for that anointing that facilitates the proclamation of your word, the teaching of your word, and help us, O oh God, to apply the word in such a way that we will experience change in our lives. Lord, we ask you to forgive us Forgive us any wrongdoing, any short-tempered, any, any word that was, oh God, hurtful. We ask you to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and that we would, oh God, just draw closer to you and learn to be more patient and, and tolerant and forbearing. And Father, that we might be a better example of who you are, oh God. May your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. O oh God, and deliver us from all the evil, everything that could come against us, every opposition against us, those that are at work right now, those that are at home, those, O oh God, who are at a medical appointment, wherever they're at, uh, whether they're in a car or in a bus or in a train, Lord, you be with them and protect them. O oh Lord, we give you thanks. We ask you all of these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. And amen, and amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So um, we see Mercedes is on. God bless you, Mercedes. She's also celebrating her birthday. And so we, uh, we want to uh, say happy birthday to her. Her birthday was a few days back. But you know, when you, you reach a certain age, the whole month is your birthday. At least I like to think that. <laughs> amen. All right. So uh, let's see if we could put our... our um, yeah. 
Yeah. There we go. And uh, here we go. So we're going to give an intro today, an introduction to the good and beautiful life. Yesterday, we sort of summarized the good and beautiful life. Now, I'm sorry, I I misspoke. We're going to give an introduction to the good and beautiful community, the good and beautiful community. Amen. So, uh, hey, hallelujah. Praise God. So we said hello to Mercedes, and I think that's it. Praise God. Hallelujah. So the good and beautiful community. So, you know, this is a trilogy. We, these are three books, three books that uh, the first one is, is the good and beautiful life. The second one, um, the first one is the good and beautiful God. And the second one is the good and beautiful life. And the third one, the last one in the trilogy, there's a fourth one that just came out. Um, I'm not doing that one at anytime soon. I, I'll probably do something else after these three books are done. This will probably take me seven to eight months to complete, uh, maybe even a whole year, depending on how well we go through it. Uh, we take our time and it gives you a chance to either buy the book or um, you know, go go over the, the classes that you've missed. They're all on on YouTube. Uh, so you can go to Circle of Christ Church uh, Media, Circle of Christ Media, rather, I'm sorry, Circle of Christ Media. I got to get all my names all together. Uh, yeah, this, this right here. There's where you find our YouTube page. That's what our YouTube page looks like, all right? Circle of Christ Media. And we will be on... Circle of Christ Media, about an hour after we finish the class, we'll post it. Amen. Um, So, um, yeah. Our introduction uh, includes uh, our objective. And the objective is to help believers grow in Christ-likeness. This is really an apprentice series on being transformed into the image of our beloved Savior. That is our destination. Our destination is to be like Jesus. And uh, and so the p- progressive sanctification is the work of the Holy Spirit, applying the work of Jesus Christ through the use of God's Word and His Spirit. We are being transformed from glory to glory into the image of our beloved Savior. And so the goal in all of these classes is to allow God to change us Transformation is the key word. I like transformation better than re- reformation or, or, you know, other words that may om- almost sound like an improvement. No, we don't want an improvement. I want Sam to die and for Christ to live. And so we're really looking for the ultimate transformation is the that last part of sanctification, which is called glorification, where our bodies are changed and we will receive a new body. And in that body, we will not have any illness, nor do will, will we have the propensity to sin. In other words, the sarks, the flesh, the old nature that was affected by Adam and Eve's disobedience. The formula that James Bryan Smith, and that's the author of these four books, and in this case, these three books, uh, he has a formula that he carries through all three books, and that formula is uh, mentally the changing of narratives. We have an idea of who God is uh, based on some Sunday school lessons and some things we heard and, uh, and even from our own studies, but it's not exactly the narrative that Jesus speaks of. And so we have a mishmash or a combination of, you know, our own philosophy, worldly philosophy, other people, our parents, mostly influential when we're very young is our mothers and our fathers. And we look to God as a father. So our earthly fathers have a big role to play in how we see God. Some people are very, very fearful of God to the point that they won't have anything to do with it. the same thing with the Holy Spirit. They, they either came up out of a, a, a very strong extremist, uh, uh, full gospel churches where there's some spooky stuff that goes on, uh, or they came from a very, very, very staid and very mellow and very quiet, uh, and and so anything that says amen or hallelujah or even raise their hands is, ooh, what are they doing? So, you know, our mindsets, 
view God from the lens of our experience rather than to view God from Jesus' word. Because the Bible says that Jesus is the only way to know the Father. To know the Father is to know Jesus, and to know Jesus is to know the Father. So we need to change our narratives. The narrative is, is the way we think about God. If we think about God as a heavenly Scrooge that doesn't really care for us, then we don't really pray that much. We're not even looking forward to approaching him. If we look at God as a, a rescue mission, a, a rescuer, uh, then we only go to him when we're in trouble. And, uh, and, and that's it. And then once we're out of trouble, we forget him. And so we don't know who God is unless we really get to know Jesus. Jesus is the one. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father except by him. And um, no man has seen God at any time except he who is in the bosom of the Father. He who is in the heart of the Father. He has revealed him. He has explained him. He has uh, directed our knowledge to knowing God through the eyes of of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, so that we we need to compare the way we think about God with what Jesus says about God, and that's what the entire first book is all about: the good and beautiful God. It, it challenges the 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 false narratives that we kind of just took in, and we put them side by side with what Jesus says about his father. And then we find out that that's a different God than what we thought. Then not only the formula uh, it challenges us mentally, but it challenges us physically. We need to practice what we call soul exercises or spiritual exercises, such as fasting, praying, silence, retreats, giving, um, uh, th those things, study of the word, reading of the word, silence, um, um, memorization of the word, all of these soul exercises, spending a day not gossiping, spending a day without lying, spending and really trying never to judge, um, spending a day blessing people rather than cursing them, loving your enemies and blessing them. These are physical exercises that we give to you at the end of every chapter because these are not things that come natural to us. And so we need to exercise them. And the best way we experience change is if we do it in community. And that's why this third uh, book is very important because uh, if you're just listening to me devotionally, you may experience a little bit of change. There's not much change that we can expect. I, I, I've experienced change teaching this course. Uh, I still have a long way to go, uh, so uh, keep praying for me. But um, the, but I, I have experienced change because in doing it with you and, 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 and holding myself accountable and also with my wife, my wife was was. Uh, with me for a good portion of of the good and beautiful God and for almost halfway through the good and beautiful life. Um, unfortunately, uh, like I said, she she's helping a neighbor and um, and so she's not uh, with us. And so but she she tries to tag in every so often and uh, she challenges me. You said this and you're not doing that. She, th she throws that in my face all the time. Um, so not, not really a good encouragement, but you know, that's, that, that's her style. E either way, the, the best way to, to get this really into you is to have two or more people that you're accountable to. And you can pick people in, in the, in the chat and, you know, exchange numbers and call each other and say, hey, are you going to be fasting this week? What day you are? I want to fast with you. Hey, um, do you want to, to do the Lectio Divina? Remember that? That was a really good and important one. Hey, um, uh, we, we want to, you know, spend some time uh, interceding for people and, and, uh, and you get people to do it with. And of course, on Tuesday nights, we do Bible study. And there's some other uh, studies that are going on through, um, and they'll be coming up. They're not really ready yet, but they'll be coming up through um, through Zoom. And if you want to join those groups, those small groups, that will be perfect. That will be a way of getting people to be accountable to and that other people are accountable to you. Because it's in that process, in that contribution of working together, doing life together, 
Iron sharpens iron. We encourage one another. You're going to see that in the good and beautiful community. This is what it's all about. And so mentally, we have to change our narratives. Physically, we have to practice the spiritual exercises. Communal, uh, the communal aspect part of the formula is doing those very exercises in the context of community. So if you're just doing the exercises by you, yourself, and I, in other words, alone, then that, that will help you change, but it won't help you change as much as if you do it with two or more others. And then lastly, spiritually, the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will remind you. The Holy Spirit will bring it to your memory. The Holy Spirit will convict you. The Holy Spirit will scold you. The Holy Spirit will reprove you. The Word of God, that's important. The Holy Spirit and the Word. The Holy Spirit and the Word. They, th these are two factors, two main factors in our sanctification. The Word of God, as you study the Word of God, as you read the Word of God, as you pray the Word of God, as you memorize the Word of God, those are all soul exercises. And then the Holy Spirit, you invite Him to be be a part of that. These two forces together, the power and presence of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, which speaks to you about what Jesus is. He reveals Jesus to us. And so we understand that Jesus is with us via the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And then the Word, when you combine these two powerful graces and gifts, you are changed by the power of the Word. The Word washes you. The Holy Spirit convicts you and he also fills you with his presence and his power. And that presence and power has a sanctifying effect in our lives. So this is the formula. This is the formula that you use to grow spiritually. This is the formula for sanctification. This is the formula. Submission. Submission is a soul exercise. Who do you submit to? You submit to your elders. You submit to your pastor. You submit to your leaders. And, and you, you submit to your parents. You submit to each other if you're husband and wife. Because the Bible says that a wife should submit to her husband. And the husband should submit to his wife. And we submit to one another. It's not just one way. And even our children, if our children correct us, and, and very often they do, we, we tell them not to do this, not to do that. Then we blow it while we're driving the car and they say, ooh, daddy, you did that. You know, you're not supposed to. Well, that's the point where you have to submit to, to their leadership. They, they led you into correction and you have to accept it and say, you know, honey, you're sorry. I'm, you're, I'm right. You're right. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Or I shouldn't have done that. And, and, and that's how you grow spiritually. If you don't have that, if you're a lone ranger, you're not growing. At, you're not at growing at the degree and level that you should be. When you are being mentored, when you have a mentor who's discipling you along with two or three others, you will grow exponentially. You will grow much faster than alone. And unless you are very, very disciplined, you, you, you really, this is why we find that people are in the Lord 20 and 30 and 40 years, and they don't ever develop uh, the gifting and their ability to minister the way that God intended them to, because they're not doing life together in a community. All right, so that this is basically uh, the essence of the good and beautiful community is that the, the, what we call the church, the fellowship of the believers, is is a, a a a agent of grace for sanctification. The highest possibility for change. What is the highest possibility for change when these activities are done in groups of two or more under the guidance of the Holy Spirit? See, it's not enough to just be in a group. Let's say you have a group of five people and you're studying the book of James or the, the book of Romans for sanctification. You're studying sanctification. But that group is not led by the Holy Spirit. Then you can end up being in debates or just talking. You drop the Bible and start talking about the news. And there's no growth taking place. So these groups have to be led by the Holy Spirit. And the mentor or the one who's discipling has to be a spirit-filled person, a person who is well-prepared to lead it, well-prepared to lead it. Very often, and it happened yesterday, that in some of the points that I'm teaching, I almost felt like preaching it. And, and, and there, there was a preachy aspect, the preach-teach aspect to it, the anointing to really emphasize it because these things should be life transforming. They should be life transforming. So these activities that are done in groups of two or more under the guidance of the Holy Spirit prepare us for the highest possibility of change. 
And oh, my brothers and sisters, do we need to change. The three core books of the Apprentice series follow a logical progression. The first book, The Good and Beautiful God, deals with our God narratives and our thoughts about God. And um, book one, the premise is that our thoughts about God must be aligned with Jesus' thoughts about God, or we will start going in the wrong direction. Once people have fallen in love with God, but the God that Jesus reveals, then we are ready for the second book in the series. And the second book in the series is the one we just finished. It's called The Good and Beautiful Life. It deals primarily with the character and virtue that Jesus wants us to cultivate. Following the teaching of Jesus in the Sermon of the Mount, Smith addresses the common struggles of life, such as anger, lust, remember epithumia, lying, worry, judging others. Ah, so, when, 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 when we dealt with the good and beautiful life, we found out that some of the, the thoughts that we had about those things uh, uh, were wrong or the emphasis was wrong. Uh, we were looking at, 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 the, at the speck in our brother's eye and not taking into consideration the beam or the log in our own eyes and uh, lying. Oh, gosh, that was a heavy one. And we felt conviction, including the teacher. And so this is this is uh, this is what we do. So each book follows a pattern of examining the false narratives that we have in our thinking and replacing them with the Jesus narrative. What does Jesus say? What does Jesus say? What does Jesus do? How does Jesus apply that? At the end of each chapter, each chapter there is a soul exercise. We asked you to do these exercises to help. The narrative change who you are. And so when the soul exercise is done by yourself, you can experience some change, but it's limited. But when it's done with two or more, woo, with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, again, the, 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 the accountability makes you responsible for doing it. If you're doing it alone, you can choose to do it or not do it, and, and you fall behind and then you give up. That's what happens. You fall behind, you can't catch up, your life is too busy, too hurried, too fast-paced, and you fall behind, and then you get discouraged. And when you get discouraged, says, I'll get it another time, or I, I, I'll, I, I'm going to watch it on YouTube, and then you never do. This is why when you join a group, it helps you because you become accountable to each other in terms of your attendance and your participation. So this is this is this is the same all the way. So the good and community, the good and beautiful community is going to work the same way as the good and beautiful life, which is the same way as the good and beautiful God work. You replace a false narrative with a Jesus narrative, then you do a soul exercise, and then you share and reflect it with one another, and you share what worked and what didn't work, and in that sharing and reflection, there's learning taking place. Amen? So um, a most important factor in the series is the reflection and contribution of fellow travelers. I'm a teacher, but I'm a learner with you. Your comments helps. Uh, Gloria, who's been in the Lord for many years and was a discipleship teacher, she adds so many things. And I'm grateful for that. I love for, you know, each one of you, Olga does all the time. And when Darby's on, he actually puts, you know, the scriptures that I'm mentioning on the, uh, the ones. Gloria did that yesterday. There was a there was a series of scriptures that I didn't have the slides for, and she put them on. We're all team teaching. We're all in this together. And when each part, that's what Ephesians 4 says, when each part contributes of its own, the body grows. We can't grow unless we're part of a body because what's growing is not you. Your, your index finger is not growing by itself. Your index finger is growing along with the thumb and the, and, and the middle finger and the ring finger and the pinky and the hand and the arm. See, it's all growing together into the head and the head is Christ. We are the body, but he is the head. We are the body but he is the head. As we each give of our part, we contribute to its growth. So you can't do this alone. You can't isolate one part of your body, one, one member of your body, and expect the rest of the body to receive that contribution, contribution if you're out there by yourself and not sharing with anyone. We, we, we must attend. We must be part uh, of a fellowship that takes attendance. And, and I don't mean actually like in school, but hey, sister, I didn't see you last week. Oh, and I don't see Joe. Uh, I'm going to give him a call. 
And you find out that Joe is sick. He's actually in the hospital. You call the pastor. You call the visiting missionary. And, and, and that's where the body ministers to each other rather than all falling on the pastor. There's no way I could pastor this church without the ministry of the body. This is called body ministry. And growth is not determined by you, the, how, the amount of scriptures that you know by heart or the amount of degrees that you have in theology. Growth is determined by your contribution to the body of Christ. And the more that we are connected to the head and the more that the head is able to tell us what to do, the growth of the vision determines the growth of the church. And the growth of the vision is determined by the contribution of each individual member. And so this is the most effective way. And so uh, when, when, when the contribution of our fellow travelers in the journey towards transformation comes, we do not change unless we are accountable to one another. And that's the most effective way to experience transformation. So if you're, if you're like, um, like Gloria, Gloria, you know, she's blessed. She has a place to live in Florida. She has a place to live in New York. That's a blessing. God bless her for that. What does that mean? It means that she has to have a church fellowship in Florida and she has to have a church fellowship in New York because. audio. I don't know what that's all about. But anyway, um, we, we, won't, we won't trouble. I think you all are hearing me. So the four, the four on the bottom, the four on the bottom, these four, these four, says the basic formula for transformation is narrative, exercise, community, Holy Spirit. Got to change the way we think. We have to exercise these spiritual disciplines. We have to do it together in community and hold each other accountable. And then the Holy Spirit has to kind of seal everything together. Okay, so you did lose sound. I don't know what's going on, how we lost sound. Um, some people are saying they lost sound. So let's, let's uh, take a break here and let's see if we can do something here. And let's uh, let's uh, let's 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 uh, let's stop this here. I don't know why we're losing sound. Let me add some some RAM memory. Maybe we need more memory. Okay, and let's let's get out of here. And let's get here. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, okay now. Okay now. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, Enid is on with us. God bless you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Enid, for letting me know that the sound came back. All right. All right. I I needed to add a little bit more memory. Uh, there's so much that has to do with these productions. Trust me on that. All right. So uh, uh, the, the, the four factors were uh, narrative. Let's see if I can remember them by, by heart. Uh, narrative, uh, 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 spiritual exercises, and community. And then the Holy Spirit gels it all together, right? And book three, which is what we're going to be starting next Tuesday, is the good and beautiful community. Uh, let's see if I can show it to you. But, you know, it'd be great if you get it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm looking there. That's the name of it. The author is James Brian Smith. And the book is called The Good and Beautiful Community. And the, it says, Following the Spirit extending grace, demonstrating love. Wow, what a great book, okay? So uh, it would be great if you got it because then even if you miss a session, you're reading it, all right? And you'll finish it before I finish it because I take it very, very slow. So you get, you'll get each chapter two or three times. And that's really the benefit of, of having it here. So God bless you. Hey, Titi Doris is here too. God bless you. And Mother Wildflower Seeds, that's Enid. <laughs> In it, she has that wonderful moniker. All right, so uh, the the third book, the Good and Beautiful Community, we're going to examine the second part of the greatest commandment. 
But the greatest commandment is, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. And then the second commandment, you should love your neighbor as yourself. So the second commandment is what this book is all about. How to love your neighbor as yourself. Loving our neighbors as ourselves. Okay, so love is the key word. I mean, uh, there are three that remain at the end, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Galatians chapter 6 tells us that the whole law, the whole law is fulfilled in love. Love is the most important part. Love God, that's your vertical relationship. Love each other, that's your horizontal relationship. So you have to have a vertical relationship of love and a horizontal relationship of love. So uh, love is the key word, and since it's a verb, it's, it speaks of action that, that we are to take to love others. So we can't just say, oh, I love you. No, I mean, that's a nice term. It sounds really nice. And you feeling it, your heart is all swollen up, your hair is standing up, and you get all these sentiments. Oh, how I love you. But the other person doesn't receive it unless that love is turned into action. You lend a hand, you pick them up, you visit them, you say a, a comforting word, you give them a word from the Spirit, you give them a scripture, you, 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 you give them an offering, you, you bless them with something that they need. Love is the key, but love is an action verb. And the danger is that we create a works-oriented style of living out our faith and neglect personal piety. And you say, what is that? Well, there's a group of Christians, mainly evangelicals and Pentecostals, that don't really, really want to really get into helping people socially. They, they, they are against social justice. And, uh, and I know why. Some of them are against the, the philosophy of social justice warriors in the secular world. Well, well, we're not talking about social justice done by unsaved people. I'm talking about social justice done by the saved people. That's the story of our nation. The story of our nation is that Christians were so socially integrated into uh, society that they were the ones who started schools. They were the ones who started um, pantries. They were the ones who started settlement houses. They were the ones who started hospitals and clinics. Okay? And so uh, that later on, the government, you know, would, uh, took over those services and, and maybe, maybe they were better off when the church was doing it. But the church is not doing it anymore. Uh, some churches are, but not many churches are doing it anymore. And it's not cost effective. It, it, it's, it's talking about millions and millions. We're talking about a greedy society, uh, 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 a society built on unrestrained capitalism means that in order to provide those services, you have to charge people an ordinate amount of monies that they cannot afford. So that's not the charity that is spoken of in chapter 13 of First Corinthians. So um, we, we have a church that is only interested in you making a decision so you can get to heaven. Who cares how you live here on earth? If they kill you, die. If you die of something, you know, die of hunger, you know, whatever, uh, sickness, uh as long as you're saved, you're going to heaven and, you know, who cares? That's the wrong attitude. Jesus cared because he became a human. He came into this world and suffered what we suffered. And part of his redemptive work is to, to become a partner, a partner in this situation, a partner in this situation, okay? So the, the, the danger is, only preaching the gospel for a decision and letting people start. But the book of James just knocks that right out. It says, show me your faith by showing me your works. See, if we're only focused on personal piety, praying and going to church every day, wonderful things, personal piety, that's what personal piety is. I'm, I'm working on me getting right with God. Never mind helping others. I got to help myself. Well, it's a very self-centered, and, and you don't really get right with God by becoming so concentrated on yourself. And so it, it works backwards. It, it, when, when we get into God, he makes us into others. He, he drives us into helping others. It, it, something beautiful happens when you minister to people. The anointing that's flowing out of you to bless them is also blessing you. It, it, that word which is sanctifying them is also sanctifying you. 
So that, that is a two-edged sword, amen? So the danger is that we create a piety, personal piety-oriented Christianity at the expense of never doing good works. The opposite is just as bad. When we're, all we're doing is giving out food, we never pray, we never do Bible study, we never check ourselves in the mirror and find out if we're growing in the Lord, but we're giving out, and we're giving a lot of money to the church. So that we cannot, it's not either or, and that's what's wrong. The church in America has either opted for all social justice or all personal piety. And it's not either or, it's both and. It's a personal piety that is so intimate with Jesus that you flow outwardly the way Jesus would. And you would be caring for the widows and the orphans and for the poor. You would be loving on them. You would be concerned about their welfare. The Sermon on the Mount challenges and presents the heart of the matter. What Jesus is saying is that the heart matters. And so in Matthew 6, 5, when we read, And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites. The hypocrites are the, are the people who call themselves the most holy, the Pharisees. The word Pharisee means the, sep the san sanctified ones, the separated ones. So they were, they were so holy roly that they were proud. It says, when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. What Jesus is saying is they already got what they wanted. They, what they wanted was to be admired by people on how spiritual they were. But God was not impressed with that. And later on, Jesus says, if your righteousness does not exceed that of the Pharisees or the scribes, you're not going to enter the kingdom of God. You need to be holy as your Father in heaven is holy. What is Jesus saying? He's saying the heart of the matter is that for the king, that for Jesus, kingdom living is a matter of the heart. It's, you may not even look like a Christian, but if your heart is that represents the love of Jesus and the caring of Jesus. Jesus sees a funeral and she's, and he sees a widow who is bereft of any economic income. Her husband died and now her only son dies. So he goes and he raises him from the dead. What is he doing? He's healing him. He's doing a miracle that raises him from the dead. But he's also providing for this woman so that she doesn't end up as a beggar or a prostitute. Because those were the two options for women in this kind of society. And so Jesus is doing both and, not either or, but both and. And we need that type of Christianity. Certainly the Circle of Christ Church sees itself this way. As I see it personally, James Bryan Smith doesn't say this, but as I see it, the problem of the church in America is an emphasis on either side at the expense of the other. Either they're so focused with personal piety and getting people to make a decision for Christ that they neglect the social ills. Or we major in social action without any regard for the soul. Neither one is right. We must strike a balance. And so kingdom Christianity of generous giving and deeds of relief should flow out of our personal devotion to Christ. It, is, it should be my time alone with God. My time alone in the word that should turn my heart soft and tender for those that are hurting that my eyes would be his eyes, that, he would, that I would see the way Jesus sees. He loves sinners. He was criticized because he hung out with the weak, with the feeble, with the unrighteous. Yeah. And, and we want to be more like Jesus. So we're going to be criticized when we flesh out a Christianity that does not side with one or the other, but brings both challenges in every direction to meet the social, physical, spiritual, emotional needs. A holistic gospel, a gospel that brings social reform, but not neglecting the call to repentance and turning your heart over to Jesus. Th th those are very important. Now, let's look at two verses that we constantly use and we have to learn by heart, right? Uh, 
Gloria reminded us that these verses were required memory verses for anyone to graduate from Discipleship and Love Gospel Assembly. I started the Discipleship Program in Love Gospel Assembly. Uh, before I came on staff, there was no discipleship, Sunday school, but no discipleship. I started the discipleship program, and it probably was the most in, the most um, effective factor in the amazing growth of the church. We always had great evangelism because we had a great evangelist, Pastor Jerry. Uh, later on, Bishop Jerry was perhaps one of the best evangelists that I ever worked with. I, I, I don't think I have ever heard him make an altar call where someone didn't get saved. He had that knack. He had that ability. He had a grace. He had a supernatural grace. Uh, but we had a, 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 a leaky, <laughs> we had leaks in the church. When I came on, we had, we had people getting saved and running out. Getting saved and leaving. Getting saved and leaving. And so we, we started the discipleship program. And it, I, I reformed it two and three different times. And uh, we had different people uh, leading it for me. Uh, Louis Hernandez, not the one who's there. Uh, Pastor Rosalie's brother was our first director of discipleship. Then after him, it was Pastor Dan Livingston. I, I used to be his pastor at one time. Now he's my pastor. How do you like that? Uh, yeah, I put him over discipleship. And after that, uh, it was Stevie Carrillo. Um and after that, it was Dorothy Lewis. <laughs> Can you believe that? I used to be part of Dorothy Lewis's pastor. And then she became, you know, doctor, Reverend Doctor uh, Dorothy Lewis in charge of Antioch. I started Antioch, but she kept it going. And now in her absence, I, I don't know who's in charge, but it's still going. Praise the Lord. So what, what we're saying is, my friends, you don't have to squash one thing to do another. You can do both. In Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, and look at this verse. This is a very common verse. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is a gift from God. Not a result of works so that no one may boast. We are not saved by any of our good deeds. Boom. That's the one we always quote. Oh no, this, this social action emphasis, that's a, a works-oriented gospel. Uh, people are unsaved and, and they're giving out food. They're unsaved and they're giving out, um, you know, um, uh, yeah, needles. Yeah, I work with that. I work with giving out needles. Why? They're going to shoot up drugs anyway. Instead of spreading AIDS, you're going to offer, yeah, yeah, it's, it's crazy. But you know, the government was doing, it. we got hired to do that. And you know what? It was beautiful because we gave them the gospel. And many of them left drugs and didn't need the needle because they received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. You, 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 don't, you don't have to be a blockhead. You, you can use anything that God provides for you for the gospel. You can. It's just a matter of creativity and anointing. But here it is, very clearly, right? Valerie taught discipleship class, that's right. And uh, yes, we did grow in leaps and bounds. The curriculum, the Lord's, cry, Lord's voice cries to the city. Yes, that was part of the, I had to write a chapter in there. And, and, and yes, uh, eventually, Love Gospel wrote their own curriculum. I, I started it with, um, ooh, uh, it was Campus Crusade. Then the second one was Intervarsity. The second one was into varsity. Here in our church, I've used, um, oh gosh, I can't remember his name. It's following Jesus. And eventually we'll write our own. Yes. Yeah. So uh, thank you. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Amen. So yes, that's the only way you're going to grow. Because if you get evangelism, but you don't follow it up with discipleship, you're just going to have a leak. There's, you know, they get saved and then they leave. They get saved. You're actually doing them harm because... Peter says it's better not to have known the Lord than to know him and to depart, to backslide. Because you suffer, because you gain a conscience. <laughs> it's a lot of suffering. Uh, so, so you're actually doing them harm if you only present the gospel and not discipleship. But here, look, this verse kind of emphasizes, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, kind of emphasizes just salvation, just salvation, you know, and we're not saved by any of our good deeds. And it's true. Paul is saying clearly, clearly here that your good works does not save you. What saves you is Jesus. Jesus is the Savior, not your good works, right? So what saves you is you're saved by grace through faith. 
That's what we read. But we failed to read verse 10. There's three verses there, not two. So let's look at verse 10. And look at what it says in verse 10. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works. For good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. I love that. That's from the New Revised Standard Version, an excellent translation. The New Revised Standard Version. Look, look, at, look at how I emphasize and I made it bold and I underlined it in italics. For good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. So we are saved by grace, but our way of life should be good works. Look at that. We are saved by grace, but our way of life should be find the good works that God prepared before you were born. God made you for a purpose. God saved you with meaning and purpose in mind, and he set up a track for you. You are to find what that track is and make that your way of life. In my case, it was pastor and teacher, and because I found it, and I went to school for it, and I allowed myself to be corrected through it, and me allow myself to be challenged for it, and accountable for it. Now I am harvesting and gathering all the benefits of that dedication because what I'm doing right now, right now, through these three devices and these microphones and these, you know, all the other stuff that's going on, you know, what we call Wi-Fi and internet, all of this, I was created for this. This gives me the greatest joy. My wife says, well, why is it that you, you love this so much? She doesn't understand. I said, I was made for this. But when you find what you're made for, there's no greater joy than doing what you're supposed to do. So to me, it was not a harsh or difficult or tiresome duty to be on two and three times a day every day during the pandemic for months. No, if anything tired me, it was not that. What tired me was the inability to visit people in the hospital, to bury people, to do very limited uh, funerals. Why? That, that killed my heart. To know that my sister died of it, my brother-in-law died of it, you know, and even recently my brother died of it. You know, three immediate family members. That's what wore me out. And that's why the church felt, hey, slow down, limited to just three days. And, uh, and listen, man, I've been wanting to add more days, but we do because, because now we have, you know, <laughs> we have other people doing it. And the word is getting out in ministry. And we're going to add, we're going to add small groups that are done by Zoom. It seems to fit the New York style of life <laughs> anyway. So, um, and it's safe. And, um, but we're hitting the streets. Oh yeah, good weather's coming. We're out there giving our tracks. We're out there doing our good works, giving our food every Wednesday, giving our food, uh, you know, uh, ministering evangelistically, uh, back to school, all those things. The faith ministry, ministering to the homeless in the street, ministering to the homeless at night. That's going to come as the weather gets better. We'll be out there at midnight. Why? Because that's where the people are. That's where the hurting are at, right? And so we were designed for those good works. So while I'm not saved by my good works, if I'm saved, I'm saved for good works. So we can't get around doing good deeds. We can't get around it. We're not saved by it, but we're saved for it. And it should be our way of life. Ooh, heavy, right? So to strike a balance, we must read all three verses together. So let's read it all together again from the New Revised Standard Version. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what we what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Wow. So that's the balance. So kingdom life is a matter of doing life together as a community of believers in whom Christ dwells. We're a community of believers in whom Christ dwells. That Christ dwelling in us is very 
is by virtue of our repentance and the grace of God, the grace that he shared with us through his shed blood on Calvary and his resurrection, through the nails that went through his hands, his broken body and his shed blood, and then his resurrection sealed it. He lives. Now, he not only lives, he is in us. He dwells in us via the Holy Spirit. So kingdom living is Christ in us. Christ dwells in us. We are a community of people in whom Christ dwells. You can't say, I don't like that sister. I'm not, I'm not shaking her hands. I'm not... I'm not speaking to her. You can't say that. You know why? Because Christ dwells in her. You're rejecting Christ. That is not discerning the body of Christ. Some of you, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, die before your time, are sick because you fail to discern the body of Christ. You treat your brother and sister as if they were an unbeliever instead of a brother and sister in the Lord. You fail to recognize that Christ is in them. That's why we have to respect one. We can have differences of opinion, but we cannot lose respect. Kingdom life is a matter of doing life together as a community of believers in whom Christ dwells. Okay? Christ dwells in us. We dwell in Christ. Christ dwells in us. The kingdom of God resides in us. We are part of that kingdom of God. The kingdom is not in trouble and neither are we. So Christ, the, we, the kingdom life is a matter of doing life together as a community of believers in whom Christ dwells. And out of that personal and intimate relationship, actions, deeds, and works flow that counter the effects of the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of darkness has young people killing each other. The kingdom of darkness has young people dying of AIDS. The kingdom of darkness has people dying of COVID. The kingdom of darkness has people uh, tr transiting drugs, uh, human trafficking, uh, killing each other, uh, stealing, uh, racism, uh, white supremacy, um, elitism, um, segregation in the church, that's, it's, it's so mind-boggling because when we see the church in the book of Revelation, out of every tribe, out of every language, out of every nation, they all come and bow and worship the Lamb. And so everything, every effect that the kingdom of darkness has brought upon mankind, this is what John writes in his epistle, Jesus Christ has come to destroy the works of the devil. We're here to destroy the works of the devil. One of his works is death. But when we gain people for the Lord, we conquer death because we are the people of the rising. We will rise again. Death is not the last word. And so, my friends, today's lesson, today's lesson um, is Doing life together requires that we recognize that we all don't have the same gift. So we need each other. Yeah. Some are teachers, but some are not teachers. Some find it very difficult to communicate publicly, but they can, they can do programs on computer that are amazing. They, they could type up and create beautiful literature with testimonies and give it out and, and, and lead people to the Lord. They, they can cook like you can't believe and they can make food so well that people come and eat and as they come and eat, you share your testimony with them and lead them to Christ. We don't all have the same gifts. It's in the variety and in the diversity of the gifts that the church grows because each part, each member is giving of his part. See, it's as Valerie gives her part, as Edith gives her part, as Gloria gives her part, as Liz gives her part, as Roseanne, oh wow, Roseanne, a dear friend, my dear sister, I miss you, Roseanne, Rosie Santiago, I got to call you, could you inbox me your number? Yeah, I got to ask you a, a very important question, Rosie, please, please, we grew up together, I love Rosie, I, I, I want to see her, okay, thank you for coming on, we grew up together in Damascus Christian Church, that's beautiful, praise God. Uh, Edie Serrano, she has gifts that she has to, uh, as each one 
gives of their gifts as 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 Darby, as Mitch, a, 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 as Gary contributes, then the body grows. Then the body grows. That's what Ephesians 4 teaches us. Okay? And so right now, we're just going to call it an end uh, for this lesson. Uh, again, I remind you that tomorrow I will not be on, but on Tuesday we'll be back on the air. And uh, hopefully we will be able to yeah, <laughs> all of these are gifts. There's so many gifts. You can't even number the gifts. Every good gift comes from the Father of lights. Every good gift. Every good gift comes from the Father of lights. Every good gift. It's amazing how many people are just sitting on their gifts. Uh, Lord, help us. Lord, help us. Okay. Let's let's turn to prayer and let's ask the Lord's blessing. Amen. We we pray for the Rosario family, uh, the death of Hector's brother, Richard. We prayed for uh, Evelyn. Amen. So let's continue praying. We want we want to pray for Maria Valle, um, who is waiting. I don't know if Ronnie got any word from her. That's her comadre. Uh, we want to pray for Larry. That's a glorious friend. Um, he's having a heart operation. We want to pray for Christine, who has a strange condition, an infection. Wanda, Daniel, Joanne James, who has a blood condition uh, out in California. Uh, and uh, we want to pray for the children in Peru. Amen. We want to pray for Anna Reyes. I haven't seen her here in a while, and I know that she's been she's been dealing with a heart condition. So someone call Anna Reyes. I'll go give her a call, find out how she's doing. Uh, Cookie Quinones, we always want to pray for Cookie. Uh, amen. We thank God for Evelyn LeBoy, who is on. Amen. And uh, we want to continue praying for... Valerie's daughter, Josie, amen, uh, that God will help her, um, and pray for my niece and my nephew, the death of my brother, um, we need to pray for Pastor Jean's sister, Lydia, that's Paula's sister, Lydia, that God will heal her, amen, uh, Iris Velas, who's battling cancer, and she's, she's faithful there every Sunday, Front row, front row every Sunday with an oxygen tank every Sunday. Puts a lot of people to shame. <laughs> Praise God. For Olga, who's going for a complete physical, pray that everything will be okay. Uh, for Ronnie's brother-in-law, Jose Torres, has cancer. It's affecting his eyes. Has tumors behind his eyes. Wow, that's tough. All right. Well, Pastor Raul had one of them like that. And so we trust God. Uh, Eddie Kirkland, God bless you, a dear friend of, of Hustle Globa, has an, had a very uh, intense motorcycle accident the day before Easter. Lord, help him. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we just come to you in the precious name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your mercy, and your love. We pray for all of these that we have mentioned. You know them all by name. You understand the major needs that are here, oh God, cancer, cancer, and cancer, so many of them, oh Lord, Father Evelyn, we mentioned already, Maria Valle, oh Lord, um, Lord, for those, oh God, who, um, like uh, Iris, who are getting treated, Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Cookie Quinones, Lord, she's gone experimental drug therapy because the protocol that they gave her did not work. And so, Lord, she's still battling leukemia. For our sister Gurley, who's still battling leukemia. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, in the precious name of Jesus, we pray for the children in Peru, that you provide for them, for the children in the Dominican Republic, that you provide for them, for the poor in La Cocina del Amor, in Bayamón, Puerto Rico. Lord, in the name of Jesus, provide for them, O oh God. 
Oh, Father, for Pastor David Marrero in Puerto Rico, put your healing hand upon his body, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray, oh God. We pray, oh Lord, for Joanne James, who has this, this strange blood disorder. Father, in the name of Jesus, just heal her. We pray, oh God, for Lydia, Paula's sister, oh God, that you would heal her. For Anna Reyes, oh God, her heart condition. For Larry as well, oh God. Father, in the name of Jesus, for Christine, for Wanda, for Daniel. Lord, all of these folks that we've mentioned, thank you, Lord, for the miracle you've done in Carmelo, for the miracle you've done in Evelyn. We pray for Josie, Valerie's daughter, Lord, that you will have your way, O oh God. We pray for those mentioned in the comments, O oh Lord, those who have cancer, this fellow Jose who has it in his brain, O oh God, behind his ears, for the fellow who had the the motorcycle accident for Jose Torres, oh God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, oh God, that you would just touch them and have a miracle for them in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We pray for Olga who will be going for her complete physical. We pray that every, every system in her body will be well, oh God. Thank you for her, oh God. And Lord, we just pray, even for those we haven't mentioned, but they are part of us, oh God, that you minister your healing touch. We thank you for this day, and we ask you all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. God bless you, my friends. Thank you for being on, and um, thank you, um, Eddie, for that. Uh, let me just take this off, yeah. Yes, we thank you for being on, and um, I'm just going to trust that... Uh, Everything will be fine with all of you and that you have a wonderful day. Uh, today's Wednesday, hump day, right? And, uh, and we pray that uh, you just forget about the rest. Jesus is the best. And may you have a wonderful, wonderful evening. God bless you.